Thanks everyone for joining us virtually. There are a few people at the Warner Library dialing in, so we've got a hybrid situation going on and it's gonna be a good night. So we are going to first hear from Brian Smith, the mayor of Irvington, to share a little bit about what we're all doing here tonight. Brian, take it away. Thanks so much, Lauren, and uh, good evening, everyone. It's uh, great to be here. Um, the village of Irvington is proud to partner with the village of Sleepy Hollow and Tarrytown alongside alongside with the groups that do a lot of the heavy lifting and sustainability for the villages, which are the Irvington Green Policy Task Force, the Sleepy Hollow Environmental Advisory Committee, the Tarrytown Environmental Advisory Council, and of course, Sustainable Westchester. Um, and tonight we are happy to welcome you to the Energy Smart Homes River Towns kickoff meeting. Um, you know, residents are encouraged to explore their home's energy usage and tap into rebates and incentives to implement energy saving measures like insulation, cleaning, heating, cooling. I've done many of those myself. I think I'm gonna do it again through this program because I feel like there's always something you can improve on. Um, and I think the important thing is not only we save money, but these will also help us to uh, reach our climate goals as a community as well. Um, on a personal note, I'm really excited to see so many people dialing in. Um, and I was looking at some of the RSVPs on Facebook and it's, it's a kind of a wide array. It's local contractors, it's HVAC professionals, and even my favorite and second favorite uh, architects from Irvington were on the phone or on the, on the call and, and they know who they are. Um, but the, the, you know, I saw that over 50 people had RSVP'd. Um, I think they're still coming on, but it's just really great that, that people are, you know, so interested in this, this type of event um, on, a, on a, a random night uh, in early fall. Um, you know, we've partnered with Sustainable Westchester and, and so many great initiatives like EV charging stations, changing our fleets, food and, and scrap recycling programs, but really the, one of the biggest impacts will be when residents themselves uh, start making changes to their, to their residences. Um, so without further ado, uh, I look forward to what Dean has to say and then hearing more about this program and, and how that can help us achieve our goals. So thank you very much for being here and I look forward to the presentation. Great, thanks, Brian. Now we're going to hear from Dean Galley, the chair of the TAC committee. Dean, are you the chair? I should have your right title. Yeah, that's right. A, a co-chair, actually. Uh, Rachel Teeger is my uh, partner in uh, Good Works. So I won't say partner in crime, partner in Good Works for the <laughs> Terrytown Environmental Advisory Council. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Brian, too. Uh, and thanks to all of you for uh, coming and uh, considering joining this, this effort to move away from carbon fuels in our homes. Um, I, I've been co-chair of TIAC for a number of years. Uh, I got involved with the environmental movement more recently, but my first interest in environmental issues was way back in college when I took a, an environmental engineering course back in the 1970s. I remember the silent spring and the whole uh, sort, of, sort of genesis of the environmental movement. Um, back then, we were uh, looking at when one of the big issues was that we thought we were going to run out of oil. <laughs> and there was an oil depletion fear. And uh, then, all, you know, so the, the government put all these subsidies in for the oil companies to, you know, make money on the fact that, that they were selling oil and that the, there was less of it to go. Well, that turned out to be a big red herring and a uh, non-issue. And the industry kept finding oil and gas wherever it looked, including offshore. And, you know, that led to a whole bunch of negative consequences. So, so since then, the environmental movements sort of focused on the, you know, alleviating the long-term negative effects of more and more of our energy coming from fossil fuels. And we certainly see a lot of negative effects coming from the climate change, the results from that, that um, you know, uh, putting uh, carbon into the atmosphere, carbon and other things that are even worse than carbon dioxide itself. Um, and, you know, so but by and large, what we need to do is as much as we can to slow and, and actually eventually reverse the, the effects of carbon driven climate change. Um, New York State is in a forefront on that. You know, uh, New York uh, adopted the CLCPA, which is um, uh, short for the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, which has some pretty high goals, but we, th we think they're reasonable um, for reducing the state's carbon footprint. Um, we're trying to achieve 70% renewable energy by 2030, renewable energy, not just new renewable electricity, but renewable energy. 
And we can only do that by switching from oil and gas to electric energy for our heating, as well as other things. So our focus for energy smart is energy smart homes in the next year or so is to get people to improve the efficiency of their homes and reduce their um, use of oil and gas. Uh, we know our communities can pitch in when we need them to. Um, we had a solarized Terrytown program in 2015 to 2016 that allowed residents a low cost path to installing solar on their homes. And we were able to get 26 homes to install solar. Um, we're kind of trying to achieve the same thing with energy smart homes, but, but this time it's by helping homeowners to convert to efficient heat pump technology for heating and cooling, as well as decreasing the energy needed by their homes for those things through energy retrofits. Um, as far as my contribution, I, you know, Brian mentioned that he had some uh, uh, certain things that he did to, you know, in this vein to try to reduce carbon footprint. Uh, I'll, I'll go through a few of them that I did. Uh, not that I'm trying to hold myself up an example, but, but just to show you the number of things that can contribute to what our combined goals are. Um, I started driving a hybrid car in 2005. That was 15, 16 years ago now. Uh, went to a second hybrid car that, was, that also had a, a small plug-in capability. And uh, in 2012, I um, converted my house, I added solar panels to my house. So I was, you know, reducing some of my electricity usage. Back then, most of it was coming from fossil fuels. So uh, that was a, a, a good thing to do for everybody, actually. Um, and I put in a high efficiency um, HVAC in my home in 2015 although that was still using gas for heating. Um, I uh, then in uh, 2019, I insulated um, my attic and added insulation to my upstairs, uh, phoned in the, the uh, rim joists in the basement where there was a lot of leakage because I'm in a 150 year old house. So it was a lot of leakage. Um, and uh, in the middle of 2020, I uh, bought a, a electric vehicle, fully electric vehicle. So that's what I've been driving. I've been taking some nice long trips with it too because um, the uh, charging stations have been built out quite a bit in our area. Um, and I put in um, last, actually two weeks ago, um, well, actually in 2020, the same year I got the electric car last year, uh, I put an air source heat pump water heater in my basement because I needed a new water heater. Got rid of my gas water heater, switched to an electric one, and it works just beautifully. We actually did a little video for, of that that, um, We'll probably uh, distribute at some point so people can learn more about that technology. Um, and and I um, just two weeks ago got my air conditioning outdoor unit uh, changed to a heat pump unit. So this winter, for the very first time, I'll be able to heat my home almost 100%, hopefully, with uh, electric power, which is what we're hoping uh, energy smart homes will do for a lot of people. Um, so I'm doing what I can, and I'm really hoping that some of the people on this call and other people will reach during this, this uh, multi-year program will be able to pitch in as well. Uh, okay. I'm going to switch back to Lauren for uh, the rest of the int intro to our contracting. Uh, That's good. Perfect. Thank you, Dean. It's great hearing about how you have taken this journey to electrify your house, not only in adding insulation to make sure it's sealed up nice and tight, but also switching away from fossil fuels towards electric appliances that can heat and cool the home. So I'm sure that's why a lot of people are on the call today. If there's a particular technology that you're interested in, please drop that in the chat. And uh, I think without further ado, we can kind of get started with the presentation. So let's do that. I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully I'm pressing the right button. Yep, looks good. Okay, so as I mentioned before, if you have questions as we're going through this conversation, please do feel free, drop it in the chat. And then after each contractor is done presenting, we can do some Q&A. So, I am Lauren Bryce from Sustainable Westchester, and I'm really happy to be talking about these different technologies and different solutions to make our homes more environmentally friendly. So um, just a quick shout out for what is Sustainable Westchester. We are a nonprofit consortium of Westchester County local governments, of which Tarrytown, Sleepy Hollow, and Irvington are all members of. And we work together to collaborate to come up with more sustainable initiatives and provide cutting edge, edge innovation. So 
Together with our municipality partners, we are able to provide a bunch of different programs to residents and municipalities. So obviously tonight we're talking about clean heating and cooling, but if you have any questions about participating in community solar to save 10% on your utility bills, signing up for the Westchester Power Program, getting information to switching towards an electric vehicle, perhaps getting solar panels on your house, paired with backup battery storage, that's our virtual power plant program, or signing up for a demand response grid rewards program, we can help you with all of that. So feel free to reach out to Sustainable Westchester for information about any of these topics. And for what we're talking about tonight, yes, we're going to be mentioning rebates and incentives that are offered by Con Ed, which are, is our local utility, but there are a whole network of statewide clean heating and cooling campaign teams. So if you have a house somewhere else in New York State, or you're thinking of a friend or a relative that you'd like to share this information with, we can help connect you to the local clean heating and cooling team, depending on where you are in New York State. But Hyperlocally, we are here together because of a partnership, as Brian mentioned, with the three municipal governments and their corresponding sustainability groups. Together with Sustainable Westchester, we are able to create this program, Energy Smart Homes, with sponsorship by NYSERDA. NYSERDA is the New York State Energy and Research Development Authority, and um, they are, are a great resource for us. So that's kind of our structure of how we're here. And the question of why are we here? Well, as Dean was talking about the goals of this CLCPA, we know that a huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions in New York State, 32% are from our buildings. And we probably feel that personally when we go to pay our own energy bills. And we know that 70, almost 75% of the energy used in a typical house is from heating and cooling. So addressing heating and cooling really is a great, a great way, not only to hopefully lower your energy bills, but to also reduce carbon emissions. So if you have questions when the presentation is over, maybe next week you're thinking about, hey, what should I do next? You can always reach us. We're happy to help by phone or by email. And we have a list of contractors that we recommend. So you'll be hearing from the four vetted contractors participating in this campaign tonight. And they are able to help with rebates and incentives and getting that financial assistance um, if you qualify. So one little quick note is the three municipalities are competing against each other. And if we are able to get 10 people in each municipality to either get a geothermal heat pump or add some insulation to their house, you can help your village earn $5,000 grant. So um, that's a little bit of extra motivation. So I don't want to delay talking about the contractors. I just want to frame the thinking of the technologies that we're talking about here. Because everyone's house is different, there are different solutions that this campaign is bringing forth. So the first solution you're going to hear from Lexi from Healthy Home and Energy Management Solutions, they'll be talking about insulation. So sealing up your house so that the expensive heated air that you pay so much for in the winter isn't going out all the cracks and crevices. Same in the summer, a house that's insulated would be cooler in the summer and you're wasting less money on your air conditioning. So most houses can benefit from having a home energy assessment to take a look at the situation for insulation and air sealing. So then we get to thinking about our heating and cooling system. So perhaps your oil burner is on the fritz or you're thinking about replacing your gas system in a few years. People are kind of wondering, well, do I go in the air source heat pump direction or the ground source heat pump direction? And I'd say the biggest reason that you might think about a ground source over an air source is if you have existing duct work in your house or you're looking to install it. So an air source heat pump has two different applications. There is the ductless mini split and there's a whole home solution. So this can work for people that have ducts or don't have any ducts. Geothermal, on the other hand, is for people that have the ducts or are willing to get those. 
And then the last solution Dean was just mentioning how he just got one of these last year is a heat pump hot water heater. So we'll be hearing in detail about all of these four technologies, but I just like to orient people a little bit before we get into it. And these are the four contractors that we'll be hearing from tonight. Each of the contractors specializes in different technologies. So they will be mentioning that as we go through. So we're gonna start with home energy efficiency. And I'm hoping that someone is on the call from Energy Management Solutions that's gonna unmute and say hello. Um, but I'm not seeing them. So I have a feeling not here. Okay, so Energy Management Solutions is one of our partner contractors. I don't think they're here tonight. I'm gonna to flip through their slides really quickly and then we're gonna hear from Healthy Home. But basically, if you're looking to have a free home energy assessment, Energy Management Solutions can help you. They will take a look at how the house is as a system and they will take a look to see where you may have leaks in your home. They'll come up with a plan to help you increase the comfort of your house and also um, do things like reduce reduce the amount of icicles and uncomfortable drafts. So they've got some good pictures in their presentation, examples of old insulation that needs to be removed and the type of work that they do in an attic. This is an example of blown in insulation in an attic, all about like wrapping a big blanket across the house. And Energy Management Solutions has some good pictures here. This is an example of them doing blown in insulation into the wall. This is a solution for a basement. They are able to help people that qualify for additional um, incentives from NYSERDA. So if you are a homeowner that perhaps qualifies for Enhanced Star property tax exemption, it means that you could get some additional funding from NYSERDA to do this project in your home. So people that, um, like I said, the Enhanced Star property tax exemption, there is a list of the incomes down here. If there's four people in your home earning less than $136,000 a year, you may qualify for this assisted home performance program and same for the Empower. So the Empower program is able to help people that are SNAP and HEAP recipients. You could be living in an apartment or a house or a condo and um, we can, they can help with getting new upgraded lighting as well as insulating, perhaps getting a new refrigerator and even low flow shower heads. So you'll probably feel this way throughout the presentation. It's a lot of information. Take in what you can, but then please know if there's something that's interesting you, you can certainly follow up with the contractors and they are able to connect you to all of these programs. And I should mention also the four contractors that we're featuring tonight are all enrolled with the Con Ed and NYSERDA program. So they're able to tap into the rebates and incentives, which is really important. So enough of me talking. We are now going to hear from Lexi at Healthy Home, who's going to share some information about home energy efficiency plus air source heat pumps. Hey, Lexi. how is everyone doing? Thanks, Lauren. Um, so just to kind of follow up, um, you guys, do you have any questions um, about energy management solutions or the difference between Healthy Home and energy management solutions? Uh, feel free to ask. The program is great. Um, Jason over at EMS is, is fantastic, and we love working with them as well. Um, so my name is Lexi. I'm the office manager at Healthy Home Energy and Consulting. Next slide. Um, so essentially what Healthy Home does is, is similar in that we do a whole home evaluation, and we try to keep your home from having images like this, where you may go up in your attic and you notice you got a whole bunch of really dirty insulation or holes in your ductwork, or there's some pink stuff shoved in that air basement area above your head in the basement or some really dirty insulation up in your um, attic. And then we want to take a whole home approach to kind of solve all of these issues. So next slide. And we, we really want to evaluate all of those things so rather than just look at that and say, oh, really insulate or do this or that, do that. Our goal is to treat your house as a system. And what we want to do is help you find out what, um, where you are with your home, what your home needs at that moment, and then help you take educated action on that. So the image here is kind of a pretty popular image through Home Performance and Energy Star. And our goal is to kind of like Lauren said, wrap a blanket around your home. And that's like that, that red line around it. What we really want to do is make sure 
that the conditioned air is staying where it belongs, that you have a proper amount of fresh air coming into your home, as well as sealing up any gaps and cracks, gaps and cracks to ensure the conditioned air stays where it belongs so your equipment is functioning as it should, and you can also take steps towards getting your house ready for a heat pump. Next slide. So our first step is to evaluate your home. So we do a home energy evaluation. Our evaluation is not free. We do have a copay. There's just a, there's a couple reasons for that that I can go into detail later. But we do a whole home test, which is about two to three hours. Well, we do things like a blower door test, which actually measures the home, home's air leakage. We do infrared scanning of the whole home, indoor air quality testing, combustion safety and efficiency testing. And then we go back to our office and we create an energy model for you. In the energy model, We'll actually input how much energy your family uses currently with the home in the current state it's in. And then we implement a solution. We kind of look at, we put solutions together for you. Improving your insulation, reducing your air leakage, maybe converting you to an air source heat pump. And then we re return to your home for a second appointment to review everything with you. This is where we're trying to sit down and educate you. Um, we're letting you know where your home's currently at and what you can do to make it more comfortable and energy efficient. Now, like I mentioned, healthy home doesn't just go out and only look at your HVAC. Our goal, first and foremost, is to get your home, what we would say, heat pump ready, um, which was actually the pilot name for the Nicer to Comfort Home program like over a year and a half ago, where they called it heat pump ready, where our goal is to reduce your load first. We want to get you using as little energy as possible before we put in this new equipment. Because essentially, if your home is super leaky and you put in this brand new super efficient equipment, your home is still super leaky. So you're still using more electricity than you need to be using. So our first goal is to reduce your load by doing things like air sealing, insulating, indoor air quality improvements. A lot of people kind of scratch their head at this, but when you all of a sudden make your home really, really tight, it can actually create issues elsewhere if you don't have the proper amount of fresh air coming into the home. But what we want to do is provide you control over where that fresh air is coming from. So indoor air quality improvements, and really just aim to get your home heat pump ready. And then if you are ready, your current equipment's at end of life, we'll let you know that and we can help you install um, air source heat pumps. Next slide. Um, so I just went over this, but I'll do it again. So again, like I mentioned, our evaluation includes a blower door test, combustion safety and efficiency testing to give you a really good idea of like where your current combustion equipment is. Um, we we'll obviously provide a thorough interior and exterior evaluation of the home, infrared, and we do an indoor air quality sample. Next step. Slide. I said step. That's slide. fine. I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wednesday night. So like I mentioned, we do that evaluation, then part of your solution can certainly be providing air source heat pumps. So we do install air source heat pumps, like Lauren mentioned, it could be ducted. If you currently have like a ducted air uh, AC system, we could certainly potentially use those ducts or run new duct work or ductless. If you don't have room to run duct work with some of these older houses may not, we could certainly possibly create a solution that would allow you to do heating and cooling with the air source heat pumps without having to run new duct work. Um, next slide. Um, so my goal, long and short of this, is basically we're working from left to right here. Our goal is to stop using these really old radiant heaters. And to do that, you want to add a little bit of insulation and air sealing work to get that home's thermal envelope really tight, get your usage as low as possible, to set up a good situation to make your home be able to leverage air source heat pumps or geothermal. Next slide. Um, so this is just an image of my team. A um, couple things to just touch on before I wrap up. One of them being, I think in the, on a previous slide I mentioned this, but I always recommend interviewing contractors. Um, this is kind of a big investment of your time and your future of what you guys want to do with your home. So I always recommend calling contractors, really understanding what they're doing and how, really get as much education as you can because it's your home and what, how your family uses your home, you know best. So kind of make sure you really interview all the contractors, like I mentioned, call EMS or Healthy Home and really talk to us and make sure we're able to provide you exactly what you're looking for. Next slide. Oh, dang it. Sorry. There's, well, I'm going to lightly touch on the um, incentives that are also available for air source heat pumps. Um, so essentially for air source heat pumps, like Lauren mentioned, um, there are some incentives that are available. Um, so costs can start around $4,000 per single zone. Of course, this is going to fluctuate a little bit, but that's a good general number. A single zone, as you could think, is one thermostat area <laughs> type of thing. Um, you guys are in the Con Ed moratorium area, so the incentives start at 13,000 for every 10,000 BTU unit of heating or cooling that the unit or heating that the unit does supply. Um, 
This is a little bit confusing for you just reading it, but essentially what a homeowner, a contractor would do is come out, size your system, let you know how much BTUs of you that your home needs to condition it. And then for every 10,000 of that, that the equipment supplies, Con Ed are awful off a $1,300 rebate. And so your contractor will be able to let you know the exact number after they've kind of created your system. Um, there's a second tier to that, which is a uh, tier 2A, which is if you install a system with an integrated controls package, which simply means there's a thermostat in the house that can, if you leave your old combustion system in place, like an old boiler in place, it means that that one thermostat speaks to both systems. That primarily it's used for your heat pumps or your main source of cooling and heating. But then all of a sudden the winter, if it drops one of these crazy, ridiculous days and it's negative 35 degrees, that thermostat setting is integrated to kick on the old combustion system to just kick it on in those really, really, really deep days. Again, some people aren't comfortable completely removing their old system, which we understand. So that integrated controls package makes sure that that thermostat speaks to both systems, but that your primary heating source is the air source heat pumps. Um, and the third tier, which is tier 2B, which means you're ripping out your entire old system, you're getting rid of it, you're getting rid of your oil tank, um, and that would be actually $6,500 per 10,000 BTU. I work in this program and this is confusing to me. So I have a fancy smancy spreadsheet that like I type a number in and it gives me the number back out and that's what my, my healthy home experts use. So don't feel like overwhelmed. This is something that your contractor should be able to clearly speak you or can clearly kind of convey to you and let you know what size your system is, how many BTUs it's creating, and therefore this would be your rebate. So it isn't like a simple number to figure out, um, but it is something that we can certainly assist you with. And it is a really, really great rebate. I mean, we're talking over 30% of your system for the most part, particularly if you're doing decommissioning, um, can be completely covered, which is a great thing. Um, so that's kind of just like a very short snippet of what those incentives look like. It can be a lot of money. Um, I will say it'll be very hard for a contractor over the phone to let you know exactly how much you would need get in terms of the incentives without them looking at your house because they just need to kind of build your system to properly convey what you need for the home. Uh, so that's kind of, that's a long and short of what we do. Um, if you have any questions, um, I, I think someone will probably put my contact information in the, uh, in this chat or I yes. will. But yeah, or I will, but you can Amy, call me can you do that? You want me to do that? No, Amy's know. right. She's going to do it. It'll oh, appear hi, soon. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. So Amy's going to put my contact information in the chat. Um, any questions, comments, concerns, do not hesitate to give me a call. Thank you, Lexi. Thank no you problem. for the overview and for joining us tonight. Perfect. So we're going to keep on the topic of what is an air source heat pump. And we are going to hear from our next contractor, Giovanni from Bell. And it's going to start at the air source heat pump move to the heat pump hot water heater, and then talk about geothermal. Giovanni, I know you're out there. Can you say hi? <laughs> I was muted. I'm sorry about that. That's good. All right, can you hear me okay? Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, so yeah, there's gonna be a lot of information being thrown at you. So I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible, okay? So um, Bell Heating and Air Conditioning, I've, um, Bell Heating and Air Conditioning has been around for over four decades. Keith Bell is now the owner um, of, um, of our company, but I've been working with the company for a very long time. I worked with his father before Keith actually took over um, the organization. Uh, next slide. We, we, we cover all of Westchester, Putnam County, some, some uh, parts of Connecticut. Uh, moving on. So as um, Lexi explained and Lauren, there are different types of heat pumps. So I'm just going to dive right into it. So there are different uh, types of heat pumps. The two uh, main ones are what, what we know as um, ground source and air source. In this case, the air source heat pump are um, subdivided into uh, ducted, ductless systems. Right now, you are looking at a picture of a ductless unit. Okay, ductless units are, they have, you know, a lot of uh, benefits. Obviously, each indoor unit is its own zone. So you actually, if you have six different indoor units, they will act as six different zones. Or as Lexi mentioned earlier, a, a zone is basically like having six separate thermostats, more or less. Um, so the indoor unit is connected to the outdoor unit. 
uh, through the uh, refrigerant mindset or piping, and that's how they communicate. Uh, just to kind of uh, explain how it really works, really an air source heat pump is basically a very fancy air conditioning system, okay? So an uh, air conditioning system, if you have it running in the, in the summertime, if you go outside and stand next to the outdoor unit and you put your hand above that unit, you're going to feel hot air. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have done that. And the reason why that air, um, the outside air that's coming from that unit is hot is simply because the system itself is removing that hot air from the house. Okay, so it's, it's actually taking, it's, 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 trans, it's, it's more or less a transfer of heat. So in, in the summertime, it's taking the heat from inside the house and dumping it outside. And then through the, the refrigerant line set and the coolant and why not, the air that is pumping into the house, it feels a lot colder because that hot air has been removed. The heat pump has a reverse valve. It's very, it's, it's a, it, it can be confusing, but I'm gonna try to simplify. So that reverse valve in the winter time reverses that action, right? So instead of removing the hot air from the house in the winter time, it's actually removing the cold air from inside the house. So if you stand next to that same unit in the winter time, that air is gonna feel cold because it's now removing the cold air from inside your house. So that's why it's called the heat pump. It, it actually reverses that cycle in, in the winter time. So this one system will provide you with both your heating and your air conditioning needs. Um, and it's extremely efficient, by the way. I, I have to add that. Next slide. Now here we have, um, this is the ducted system. So it's basically the same concept as a central AC system. Uh, if you notice, there's the outdoor unit uh, known as the heat pump, then it's connected to the air handler inside um, through the refrigeration lines or line sets is what we call it. And then you have the, the ductwork. Now, in this case, you, um, the ducted system typically for the most part has one um, a thermostat. I mean, you can add different zones to the one system, um, but that's pretty much it. It's just a, a regular central AC system that will give you heat in the winter time. And there are different, obviously there are different types of efficiency uh, systems. Here, um, this is basically one of the ads that we had out. Um, there are, like Lexi mentioned earlier, there are, and, and Lauren as well, there are a lot of um, incentives out there. Um, and it's, it's, it's very difficult to tell you over the phone. A lot of people call the office and say, hey, so how much do I qualify for? Well, first and foremost, we need to come out and do an assessment because each home is unique, right? Um, so we have to look at the square footage. We have to look at cubic feet. We have to look at heat loss. We have to do a lot of, um, a lot of, um, numbers crunching, if you will, in order to come up with the exact BTU. When, when Lexi was talking about the BTU requirements earlier is basically what that means is, um, what are your heating requirements for the house in order to be properly heated? That's what we have to figure out. The AC part of the heat pump is very easy, but we got to make sure that we give you enough BTU output uh, to keep you nice and comfortable in the wintertime. <laughs> so it's very important. The heating portion is extremely important, and that will determine what type of rebates uh, you qualify for. Now that I'm on the topic of the rebates, uh, we, will, we will do all the legwork on your behalf. So we will apply for the rebates. Uh, we will we'll, we'll do everything for you more or less, you, you, have, um, you don't have to do much there, really you only sign a couple of pieces of paper and that's it. That's a, good, that's a good point. So the rebates and incentives that flow from Con Ed go to the contractor. So you, the customer, are not waiting for a reimbursement check from Con Ed. You see that discount right away. And now that I'm yabbering away, Giovanni, can you mention from this picture that shows the outdoor unit and the ductless mini split head, how many um, heads can be attached to one outdoor unit? And how would sure. that look so in somebody's house? Yeah, so the rule of thumb really, I mean, we can, we can connect up to five indoor units to one outdoor unit. Um, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to exceed the capacity of the outdoor unit. 
Uh, so if we have, just to kind of give a very easy example here, if we have a 24,000 BTU unit, outside unit, right? And we have six, I mean, four 6,000 BTU units inside, right? That equals to 24,000 BTU. So for that one 24,000 BTU, you can theoretically hook up uh, um, six, I mean, I'm sorry, four 6,000 BTU units. However, if we are looking at two, a 12,000 BTU indoor units, you're capped out at two <laughs> because you're going to, you, you, you meet that max of uh, 24,000 BTU. So as long as you don't exceed the outdoor unit capacity, you can, you can uh, connect up to five indoor units to one outdoor condensing unit. Or okay. All right, moving right along. Now we're gonna talk about the heat pump hot water heater. Yes, so the heat pump hot water heater is actually very exciting. <laughs> I really like this thing. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, you know, the heat pump technology is actually something that's been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, here we've been installing um, or working with the geothermal technology for nearly two decades. So uh, it's, it's just gaining a lot of popu popularity recently because, um, you know, they are obviously, it's the cleanest and most efficient way of, of heating and cooling your home. So that technology was actually taken and said, why don't we use that to heat the, the, the water? Uh, that we use in our homes as well. So the heat pump hot water heater, it basically is just a, a hot water heater tank with uh, a, a heat pump attached to the top of it. And, and uh, because it is using the ambient air uh, to heat the water, right, it actually also acts as a dehumidification system. So if you have it in your um, a mechanical room where it gets super hot because obviously it's a mechanical room, that heat pump hot water heater will remove that humidity, will then use that humidity and that hot air inside that room to heat the water uh, for consumption in your home. And then it will then release the, the, the cold air back into that room. So it also acts as a um, conditioning system. <laughs> so the room will be nice and dry and cool. And this is a picture of what the uh, heat pump hot water heater looks like. And it's extremely efficient, by the way. I should also add that. Um, there are incentives also uh, for the heat pump hot water heater uh, because it is the heat pump technology. So the average cost for one of these um, uh, tanks and with the insulation and why not is roughly somewhere between 2,500 to 32, maybe $3,500, depending on the size of the unit because they can go from you know 40 gallons all the way up to 80 gallon capacity. Um, yeah, and, and, and just keep in mind, you know, the uh, electric hot water heaters, just a straight electric hot water heater, um, because of New York State uh, uh, rules and regulations, were capped at 50 gallons. So if you have a house with, you know, five bathrooms and it requires more than 50 gallons, then we would have to install two separate electric water heaters. When it comes to the heat pump hot water heater, you can actually go up to 80 gallons. So that's also a very, a very good benefit as well. Okay, thanks for that. And now we're gonna talk about a third option, the ground source heat pump. So we're gonna hear from Bell and then we're gonna hear from Dandelion. And I kind of like having the repetition of hearing the technologies from the different contractors. So hopefully you'll find that helpful too. So Giovanni, do you wanna yes. talk about the different uh, sure. solutions? Sure. So, the, so the the heat pump hot water heater. I, I'm sorry. Um, now we're moving on to the geothermal, which is the ground source heat pump. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there's the two different types: the air source and ground source. Now, the ground source, the geothermal, it is by far, and and Dandelion will back me on this one. Um, geothermal is by far the most efficient and cleanest way to heat and cool your home. And the reason for that is because it's, obviously it's, on, it's, you know, it's in the ground and we are working with a constant temperature and I believe it's somewhere between 54 and 57 degrees uh, ground temperature. So the systems are extremely, extremely efficient. Um, so we have the water to air, um, obviously. Um, it's, um, it's like your regular um, air conditioning, central air conditioning system is, is forced hot air. 
And then there's also the water to water. The water to water, um, you know, it's good for the, for the larger homes that have radiant heating. Uh, sometimes customers like to, you know, they want to keep a, 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 um, some of the radiators that they have in the house, which, and then we can connect it to the water to water geothermal. We, we tend to install more of the water to air than the water to water uh, systems, but they, but they are out there. Um, obviously, we've been working with this technology for such a long time. So whether your house has ductwork or not, as long as it qualifies for the, geo, for the technology itself, we can pretty much do everything from, from A to Z. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, we have installed um, ductless geothermal systems as well. They are out there. So if you have, um, um, you know, there's a space in your home or challenges with space in your home and you still want to do the geothermal, we can do ductless geothermal as well. Next slide. So pretty much uh, this is a picture of how the um, geothermal water to air works. It's the, same, it's the same concept as the air source heat pump. So um, on, your, uh, on the left side of the screen in the cooling mode, right, you notice that the hot air is being, um, is being um, removed from the space or the house in this case. And you notice it goes down the loop into the ground, right? So that heat is being released into the ground. At the same token, you notice the, the blue color piping, that's the actual system itself drawing uh, cool uh, water um, from the ground, that, that cools the water actually. It goes into the system and then it takes that uh, cool water and turns it into uh, cold air and, you know, express it into the home. And in the heating mode, it's just basically doing the opposite. Um, this is a picture of um, one of the geothermals that we actually installed. There are, there are a lot of incentives, and I think we, we need to, to, to uh, update this, uh, this slide uh, because the incentives uh, for geothermal are much higher than, than um, no, let me rephrase that. They, they have an added incentive of a federal tax credit that air source heat pumps don't have. Uh, and that is 26% in addition to the um, Con Ed rebates uh, given that go uh, up to uh, 6,500 6, per 10,000 BTUs at five degrees. So if you were ever thinking about um, even just looking into geothermal technology, quite honestly, um, right now would be the time to do it um, because of all the incentives that are out there. Um, it is extremely um, efficient and, um, and it's, uh, it's, like I said, the cleanest way of doing so. So you will be reducing your gas emission, helping, helping the environment, helping your home, you know, saving some money, <laughs> all of the above. Uh, so thank you for letting me uh, talk uh, and talk and talk and talk. But if you have any additional questions, uh, don't hesitate. Give us a call. Um, like Lexi said earlier, I do encourage you to, um, you know, to do your homework. Um, if you have any questions, give us a call. Uh, we'd love to come out, do an assessment, see what technology you qualify for. And it's all uh, free, free of charge, obviously. There is no cost for us to come out. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Giovanni. That was really helpful. And I do see there's some questions in the chat. Um, once the presentations are over, we'll go through them all verbally too. Uh, okay, so we're going to keep on the ground source heat pump geothermal trend. We're going to hear from Dandelion. And right before we hear from Dandelion, I just want to let people know that NYSERDA has a special tool, their geo possibilities tool. Amy is going to put a link to this in the chat as well. But basically, you can type in your home address and this tool will predict if your house is a good qualifier for geothermal. I typed in Dean's address today. Hope you don't mind, Dean. And um, I put his address in. It says, yes, it's a good, um, it may be a good solution for geothermal. And then the calculator spits out what you could expect to save. And I will just once, I'll say one caveat to this calculator is it's not taking into account 
the amazing rebates and incentives. So whatever this calculator says, imagine that the number will be much lower. So that's the Westchester Geo Possibilities tool. Okay, we are now gonna hear about the dandelion geothermal system from Vinay and I think Shannon as well. So um, I will go to your next slide and hopefully you guys will Thanks unmute. So uh, okay. Unfortunately, Shannon had to drop off, but uh, as you saw, I said Corey up there. Corey's uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Vinay Sharma. I'm the, the head of marketing at Dandelion. And uh, I just wanted to uh, really quickly piggyback what Giovanni just said about uh, uh, geothermal and, and ground source heat pumps. They are the most efficient and he's spot on. And, and uh, yeah, you know, when you said it's the best way to, uh, to, help, to help fight climate change, you know, Giovanni, I just wanted to reach through the computer and give you a hug. But um, so uh, basically just a little bit about Dandelion. If you ever don't know about us, uh, we were a company that, that spun out of Google's X moonshot division. Uh, we're about four years old. And uh, basically the idea was we only do geothermal. Um, and the idea was to be a one-stop shop from, uh, from design, bespoke design for every home, uh, all the way down to installation. Um, although we actually do do some partnering with, with Bell. So, uh, so uh, you know, thanks, thanks for the partnership there for, for some actual drilling. Um, we raised uh, some money in, uh, I'm, by the way, I'm giving somebody else's presentation. So, um, raised some money in, in, uh, in, in January. Uh, this is Breakthrough Energy, which is Bill Gates uh, uh, fund. And obviously we've been off to the races. Right now we're only available in New York and Connecticut. We've just expanded to, to Western Massachusetts. Um, and uh, obviously the, the goal is to, to, to grow from there. Um, so uh, why it matters, Kathy Hanoon is our founder. She's the one who spun it out of, uh, out of Google. And, uh, you know, she, this is like such a quote that, that you think about in the future, when people look back, combusting a fuel inside your house will seem like a weird thing to do. Um, her, her vision um, is to, she, we want to make dandelion. Uh, we want to do what Tesla did for cars about 10 years ago. We want to do that for homes. We want to electrify homes, right? And that's the idea, get everybody off of fossil fuels. Uh, I mean, if I had it my way, every new home built from here on out would only built, would be built with geothermal um, and, and never, never use uh, a gas or oil um, or a fossil fuel again. Just uh, real quick, uh, homes and buildings are the number two source of greenhouse emissions in New York State. Um, if you really drill down to your personal impact, um, thinking of your world, your home is actually your biggest personal carbon emitter. Um, even if you have a, an electric car, um, it, uh, your home is where, you know, think of the heat that you burn in the, in the summer and obviously, you know, the impact of, of electricity as well. Unfortunately, you still do need that. Next slide, Lauren, yeah. Um, and then, the, you know, while, while solar, everyone knows about solar, which provides electricity, um, it does, obviously doesn't help your heat since about uh, almost 90% of homes in New York um, are, are either natural gas or fuel. And here in, in Westchester, I'm, I'm in Westchester with you all, I live in Rybrook, um, gas is pretty much the, the, the way to go. And the really cool thing about Southern Westchester right now, as Giovanni mentioned and Lauren even mentioned, the incentives and the rebates, if you're, you know, assuming you're a ConEd customer, are for geothermal are just, frankly, insane. Um, I mean, it's kind of, uh, it, it, it kind of, really makes geothermal almost, uh, almost cheaper than any other alternative out there uh, right now. So, uh, next slide. Thank you. So, uh, Giovanni already covered how it works. Uh, this is just a diagram of winter. It, in the winter, it's taking cold air out of your house exchanging it with the ground loop. The ground loop is just water. Uh, it's 70% water, 30% antifreeze. Um, and it, so it's taking the cold air out of your house, dumping it into, um, uh, dumping that into the, the ground loop. The ground loop is, as Giovanni mentioned, is a constant 55 degrees. That heat gets dispersed into the ground. The water comes back up. The cold water comes back up at 55 degrees. And now the heat pump just has to heat from 55 to a nice and comfy 72 degrees. In the summer, it's the exact opposite. It's a, it just works in reverse, the heat pump. Um, I mean, as a matter of fact, in, in the, in the, the best way to describe a heat pump is uh, everyone already has one in your home, but you just call it something else. You call it a fridge, right? So basically in the winter, uh, in the summer, your home is just a big fridge and it's taking that heat out of the fridge, pumping the heat out of your house into the ground. It gets, now it gets warmed, uh, I mean, cooled to 55 degrees. 
and obviously then comes out as cool air into your home, right? So that's uh, that's how geo geothermal works. Um, that's oversimplifying. Here's a picture of uh, of the actual ground loop. It's only about a four and a half, five inch diameter hole uh, that gets dug about 500 feet into the ground. Depending on the size of your house, you might need multiple um, uh, multiple bores. And then that's just high density polyethylene that goes into the ground um, and creates a loop at the bottom, right? So that's just water and antifreeze running through that infinitely, constantly running through there. Um, and, uh, and it's actually something I learned. It's uh, when they when they fuse it, to, it's not screwed or anything. It's actually heat fused. So to, to create a to create that tight seal that has to last forever. And then um, while they're um, while they're uh, boring the hole and they put the pipes in the high density polyethylene, then they also put some um, I forgot what it's called, but then they fill the hole so that it's completely filled. It's almost like grout, right? So it's kind of filled with grout all the way up to the 500 feet. And then you can see the pipes now, there's a trench that's that's about four or five feet down uh, along your home. This next picture, this shows the trenching going into your house, right? Um, so you can see that uh, it literally goes right through the foundation. Next picture is a nice, beautiful yard again, right? So the idea is when, when we're all done, I mean, it's a full construction project, but um, you know we'll regrade it and the grass will grow again. And then this is what it looks like on the inside, right? Uh, so you've got uh, you've got your, your heat pump there um, that's connected to all your ducts, and you've got the two big ground loops there. You can see them on the bottom of the screen. Um, but uh, it, Lauren, I don't know if we have time, but I've got a two minute video of a customer um, that that actually Con Ed did. Um, it's, it's a video that's on Con Ed site, but I'm happy to play it if you want me to. Um, I have to share my screen, but if you'd rather not, I can just share the link. Yeah, put the link in the chat because next month on October 19th, we're going to be doing another event where homeowners are going to be sharing their video stories. Um, in normal times, we do a, a tour around the villages, but this time we're going to do it virtually. So in 1019, we'll be opening up a couple people's homes and taking a tour of geothermal, air source, home energy efficiency, and heat pump hot water heater. And I don't, have a, I don't have a pricing slide on here, but I do want to touch on the rebates again, because um, if you think of an average home is, let's call it 3,000 square feet, probably needs maybe a four ton heat pump, right? So four tons, maybe five. For each of those tons, you're getting $6,500, right? So let's say if it's a four ton heat pump, that's $26,000 in rebates from Con Ed that will come off the price. So if the price of a four ton is 30 grand, 35 grand, like you're literally paying nine or 10 grand, right? For, for your entire system installed. Plus then you put on that 26% federal tax incentive uh, on top of that. Um, it's, it's really, like, I just wanna reiterate what Giovanni said, like this is the time to do, to do geothermal and um, to, to really do it here in Westchester, frankly. But I, I, if you all wanna go while you're doing this, Go on your phones, go to dandelionenergy.com. There's a, there's a six, 30, there's a 30 second uh, survey, six questions. You just gotta, you'll see if your home qualifies for geothermal quick and, 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 and you can go, go from there. Okay, thank I you. Think that's the last slide. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's our phone number. I mean, if you wanna reach out to Corey, yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks, Vinay. Okay, so we're in a good spot to kind of do some questions and answers. Just want to regroup with people quickly. So kind of the next step is to perhaps think about which contractor you might want to give a call to, to schedule a site visit for the heat pumps, or perhaps you want to sign up for a home energy assessment. So it's really um, the next step is to pick that contractor. But if you have questions in between that, and you can feel free to reach out to us at the office and we can kind of walk you through the different options and, and that kind of stuff. And we also have some good information on our website about the different rebates and incentives and we are here to help. So feel free to take a screenshot of this slide if you wanna keep my contact info. Amy also can drop that in the chat. And then just a reminder that this presentation is being recorded and we'll put it on YouTube. And if you got an invitation to this webinar tonight, which obviously you did, because how else would you have gotten the Zoom link? <laughs> you'll get the recording as well. I'll send that out in the next couple of days. So let's take a look and see what's happening in the chat. And then we can kind of get these questions right to the contractors. And before I do that, I think Jason, 
Jason, you're on. Jason from Energy Management Solutions. Do you just want to say hello quickly? Yeah, thank you, Lauren. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, so um, our company is based on Rockland, and we also uh, service Westchester primarily just because of the housing stock in the market. But we've been in the NYSERDA programs for over a decade. Um, we offer, you know, a comprehensive home assessment through NYSERDA. And, uh, you know, I'd be happy to break out in, in the discussion and answer any questions you may have regarding uh, the assessment. Um, you know, we check insulation levels. We'll look at your HVAC efficiencies. Um, you know, we can potentially run a blower door test to see how leaky the house is. So we like to, to pride ourselves on, uh, on, you know, really a comprehensive assessment. And then we, uh, we provide the detailed findings, um, you know, upon completion. Um, We'll break down all of our recommendations. We'll break down how the house is performing. And from there, we, we kind of go over the scope of work that we're recommending. And our, our staff in-house actually, uh, you know, we complete that work ourselves. So we try to pride ourselves on being a one-stop shop from the energy assessment right through implementation of any kind of insulation measures. Um, you know, we, we look at it as really the first step to any kind of, you know, serious HVAC upgrade, retrofit, or anything of that nature, just because it's so important to really reduce the consumption overall of the house first, and then you can size and scale a unit to exactly what you need. You know, you have to really reduce the consumption first, plug all the leaks, and then when you put a high efficiency system in, like everyone's talking about, you know, you can really get the most benefit out of that. Um, so I know I'm a little late to the party. Sorry, we had technical difficulties, but thank you, Lauren, for, for uh, putting our slides up. Um, these are some of the programs that we are familiar with, as Lauren may have mentioned before. Um, you know, these are the, the seven or eight different programs that we uh, partake in as a company. So again, if you have any questions about our company or how we perform, um, you know, I'm happy to have a discussion. We can break out. Okay. Thanks, Jason. And Hi. just to... Be clear, Jason does offer a free home energy, right? Free home energy assessment. Absolutely. Yeah, we offer free home energy assessments um, through the NYSERDA program. And there's various income programs as well that, uh, that homeowners may qualify for. And now okay. even throughout New York State, regardless of income, there's additional incentives that are available, as uh, some of the, the gentlemen mentioned earlier. So, you know, we're happy to talk to you about the different programs and how you may fit into one. Okay. Thanks, Jason. All right. And I know that there's been a lot of back and forth in the chat, but I'm still going to verbally read out the questions. And this way, if anything else comes up, we can talk about it. So Lynn started off with a question, does the electricity need to be upgraded in the house? So Giovanni or Lexi, do you want to talk about upgraded electrical panels or Vinay as well? So yeah, sometimes you, we'll need to come out and take a look at the panel. It's hard to know off the top of your head if you need an upgrade, but essentially, at least for a healthy home, we'll let you know if you need an upgrade and we can either coordinate with our electrician or if you, some people have a preference for the electrician, we can just let them know what you need to upgrade to. Yes, just to kind of piggyback on that, it, it's this question that's very difficult to answer without doing uh, a visual assessment of the home, but I guess a simple answer would be if you currently have a central AC system running and you're just looking to replace that with a heat pump, um, most likely you don't have to upgrade. Um, but the yeah, there's something that that will be determined with the uh, the home assessment. And Vinay, okay, yeah, nothing to add. They, they, okay. they nailed it. Oftentimes, my answer to people on the phone is, "Well, the contractor needs to come out and take a look," but. Um, and we okay. say, well, we need to come out and take a look. Yeah. All right. So, Kirsten, you put a good question in the chat. Can the heat pump hot water heater be used for radiant floor heating? And Lexi, you answered, but I didn't read Yeah, I just said for a healthy home doesn't do that. I don't know if it can do that. I, I kind of deferred to Bell in my response. I was like, I don't know if that maybe Bell could do something like that. I know healthy home, we just installed heat pump water heaters for domestic hot water. Um, I do believe that's their primary purpose. Um, but again, like I mentioned, tickers in the bell may have some sort of solution that I'm not aware of, but I, I'm not aware of one. Yeah, and Le Lexi is correct. The heat pump hot water heaters mainly for, you know, hot water consumption in the home. Um, but you know, if, if, if the needs are uh, for radium floor heating, um, it's a different process that we would have. Let's talk about that. I actually had a phone call today and someone asked me if radiant floor heating could be paired with geothermal or can you talk about that if someone wanted to take their project to the next level? Yeah. Healthy home has radiant floor heating in our structure. I have no idea how it works though. Sorry guys. <laughs> I know we have it. We use it. Um, but I, I don't, I know it's a geothermal system and it's a horizontally loop, but in terms of the installation, 
uh, I would need to default to one of our owners. Maybe Giovanni from Bell, you can talk a little bit about the radiant floor heating. It's a little yes. off topic. <laughs> It's a little off topic and, and you know, uh, quite honestly, Keith is the um, guru <laughs> when it comes to the uh, radium floor heating. But I can tell you that that's something that can be done with the water to water because uh, you specifically mentioned the geothermal. That's one of the benefits of having the uh, water to water geothermal. It can be done. Um, yes. Okay. All right. We have a question from Catherine. How does geothermal technology do in a storm like Ida? Definitely, we're all thinking about um, how to make our homes more resilient. So let's do it for each of the technologies. Who wants to answer for geothermal? I, I can jump in. Um, I mean, it, it's it, it'll work fine, but flooding is not something that will, it can withstand, right? So just like anything, unfortunately, if the basement floods, that's something that, that will be a challenge. <clears throat> but if there's no flooding, there's no issue. Assuming, of course, you, you don't lose power. Okay. And uh, Lexi, do you wanna talk about heat pump placement outside of the home for being um, so, I mean, there are certain standards. It, it's a little tricky when we're talking about storms like like Ida that just occurred because it, it is just like a freak occurrence. I, I heard people with feet of water in there and it's kind of hard for us to say. Obviously, we, we plan for and there's certain heights that you, you mount condensing units above grade. Uh, but when in the, there are these huge storms where it's kind of unavoidable, like water might run into it and there may be an issue. It's a little challenging. There's definitely trends to to best practice, but best practices are not accounting for massive freak storms that happen rarely. Maybe Giovanni can ha has a little more insight on this. I don't do much oh, installing. That's, no, that's pretty. That's pretty much it, really. Uh, like you, like you mentioned, you know, there you have to be a certain um, height from the because obviously, you know, if it snows, <laughs> you want to give yeah. the, um, enough space to still breathe. Otherwise, it'll just freeze. Uh, but when it comes to a storm such as Ida, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's an act of God is what, you know, it's, uh, insurance is called it. So it's something that you can't really, you know, unfortunately, you can't predict how much water is going to fall, you know, how many feet of, you know, how much flood we're going to get. But yeah, it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to answer that question. Um, My team who installs, again, it was one of those things where we obviously all, everyone on this call installs to best practices, but even with our best installations, things are gonna happen that we, we can't control rainfall, unfortunately. Right, and Daniel's mentioning, Vinay, can you confirm that the wells would not be disturbed from flooding? You're muted. The wells are no problem in flooding. It's not the wells at all, the bores. It's really just about the electrical equipment that's in your basement. Correct. Yeah. Like the basement dry. You're shaking your head. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. I think we're all we're all considering how to make our homes more climate resilient, and certainly with this idea of lessening our carbon footprints, we could potentially be helping to make steps on that. So, let's see. Uh, Leola had a great question about permitting, and then Brian chimed in with some good news. Um, Brian, do you want to unmute and talk about that? Leola sure. was asking. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I can even turn my video back on now that I'm not eating anymore. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we, uh, we kind of met as a board and decided that for any of these types of applications, we want to try to waive the, um, the application fees uh, to, you know, just kind of say, you know, throw our money where our mouth is and say that, um, you know, we don't want those fees to be a, a hindrance, which they can actually add up as well. So if someone's coming, <clears throat> I can't always speak, uh, hopefully our building department is also very, uh, motivated to get these types of projects through. Um, and depending on the project, uh, you know, you shouldn't need zoning board approval, but you, you might need building building approval. Um, I mean, sorry, not building, uh, planning board approval, depending on the, the scope of the project. But um, hopefully most of it can be contained to the building department. Um, and we are hoping to, you know, reduce the, the fees associated. And we That's are open to ideas. So if the Green Policy Task Force has some other ideas on how to incentivize uh, we're all ears. Love that. So cool. Maybe Irvington's going to win the $5,000. Actually, all three villages can, but 
That's a yeah. that's a great thing. Maybe okay. you should talk to all the towns about reducing the permits. That would be great. I'm sure Giovanni and Vinay would agree with me <laughs> that all the contractors would be thrilled to not do permit and have to deal with the fees all the time. Lexi, she had and to say it. She had to take the opportunity. I had to. Come on. Beyond the fee, especially when it comes to geothermal, maybe reduce the pace. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. Okay, let's loop, let's come back to this. This is a, yeah, a good. And if the contractors have ideas, you know, you can. Uh, I'll throw my email in the uh, in the chat. If you have ideas on how to make this process easier, um, you know, let us know. Um, we're again, we're kind of all ears, and we'd love to be able to, you know, kind of benefit these projects versus a traditional replacement or something. So. Uh, that's that's kind of where we can come in, even though it's you know not the biggest part of the fee. Uh, I think it's more the process sometimes that's that's harsh. So if you guys yes. are finding you know roadblocks in the process, and there's a way to you know potentially apply some common sense, uh, we're all here. Great, thanks, Brian. Okay, David has a question in the chat. Um, it seems like a good time to talk about comfort home pilot or comfort home and the incentives that are attached with good, better, and best. Yeah, um, so healthy home and energy management solution as well is a part of the NYSERDA. So comfort home is basically the market rate. There's no income limits to it. Assisted home performance is like one step below that. And then Empower is for those that are eligible for SNAP and heat benefits. Healthy home primarily works in um, the comfort home program. So there are eligible tiers. Basically, the goal is to get your house as insulated as possible. So the first tier eligibility means you have your rim joist, which is like the area between your basement or crawl space and where the house meets that insulated, as well as the attic. And that would make you eligible for about a $1,000 incentive. Um, the second tier, they want you to insulate your walls and any floors. So if you have like conditioned space over a garage that's unconditioned, they'd want to make sure all of your exterior walls and those floors are insulated as well. And that would make you eligible for $2,500. If you are in the Con Ed territory, though, you may be eligible for an additional $2,000 on top of that uh, through the SEALED program. Um, and I know Jason is part of that as well. So the better program could be about $4,500, depending on... Um, on that and then the best scenario is when you um, also do windows as well that are up to energy star grade and that's a four thousand dollar incentive and again also eligible for the additional dollars from con ed the utility sealed program as well so that'd be six thousand um basically how healthy home does it is we present our solution and then we let you know what you're eligible for and then if you kind of want to pick and choose we kind of let you know how that would impact your incentive um, and i know jason can also speak more to the sealed program in general who also offers financing um, Healthy Home does not offer sealed financing, but we do just offer the, the straight incentives from Con Ed. But Jason, I think you are, you do, you are a sealed contractor as well. Yes, yes. No, and Lexi did a great job describing the, the, all the benefits and the different tiers. Um, and there's not really much more to add to that. Honestly, we're, we're just grateful that the incentives are back again. You know, they were, yes. they, um, they were here for a while and, um, you know, that they, NYSERDA did away with them for a little bit, but it, it's nice to see that they have the pilot up and running and it, it's, you know, it's, it's really great for us downstate. So, um, you know, the homeowners have a lot of, uh, you know, incentives to, uh, to take advantage of for sure. And the sealed Thanks. incentive is great as well. Cause you can dovetail it. Um, mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, really go after, uh, you know, a full home, uh, retrofit, which is great. That's the goal. Um, Jason, can you explain quickly what the sealed financing is for people that are unfamiliar with it? Yeah, so their, their program um, is, is sort of like a pay it forward approach. So there's really no cost out of the pocket for their, um, their whole house retrofit. And what we do is we go in, um, we assess the home, we identify square footages, the best application for certain products. And then from there, a scope of work is created. Um, you know, a, a contract is agreed between you guys, between the homeowner and sealed. And there's terms to that, to that agreement, whether it be, you know, X amount of dollars is paid forward for the contract. But again, there's no upfront cost for it. And there's set terms. So, you know, I'll let Sealed get into the weeds a little bit more as far as the terms of the contract with them. Um, but it's a great way to take advantage of all that the programs have to offer at a really cost effective way of doing so. So, you know, the consultation is no cost at all. And, uh, you know, energy management solutions and I know healthy homes definitely offer, uh, you know, that, that, that sealed incentive dovetailed with comfort home. So we're here to answer any questions you have as well regarding the assessment. Good. Okay. 
We've got a question from John. Looks like he's about to undertake a pretty big project. Wants to do upgraded windows, insulation, new roof, new heating system, new cooling system, solar panels. What is the best way to manage the whole process? Tricky question. Do any of the contractors kind of want to take that? Step one, take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so from a healthy homes perspective, our goal would always be to get a baseline of where you're currently at and then try to create your priority list. Um, obviously, in our world, you want to get your home, look at the envelope of the home first, uh, because that obviously is going to impact your HVAC sizing. Now, does that always happen? Um, no, I've had customers call me that they cannot wait for that because they need their heat. They're in a no heat situation. So you kind of have to make your priority list of what's best for you um, in a perfect, happy perfect world, you get your envelope all set to go, then your system is sized appropriate to your current envelope, and then you're able to understand what is the most ideal size solar system from there, reducing your energy usage, then producing your energy based off what your, your lower consumption is. Um, but again, it's you know what you need best, uh, so sometimes it's have faith in yourself too. I will always say that to customers is sometimes we're like, I think I need this, I think I need that, and it's kind of like go with your gut and really have faith in that. Um, because again, some, as a contractor, I'm going to tell you, oh, this is an ideal, perfect world, but we don't live in a perfect world. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I believe in that. Sure. And when it comes to a situation such as yours, I'd say that, um, you know, because uh, we work with um, all uh, different technologies, um, definitely, you know, a home assessment would be key. We can uh, come in, take a look at your property. And if it qualifies for geothermal, what we can do here at Bell is we can give you uh, suggestions or options to review, uh, to look at. Uh, we can do, you know, we can give you a ductless heat pump option, a ducted heat pump option, a geothermal option, uh, show you what the rebates uh, that you qualify for are, and perhaps maybe, you know, comparing them um, side by side can help you uh, decide which um, option would be the best one for you and your particular needs. Okay. Also in terms of now ensuring a process that the, the upgrades don't get in the way of each other, this is a tricky thing um, when you're taking, when you're looking at a huge thing of insulation, air sealing, upgrading, like windows upgrading, HVAC, um, it's kind of inevitable that, that things may not go perfectly. And I think it's just understanding that going into it, that like, we love everything to go perfectly all the time, but understanding things may, may happen and just being prepared for that. Um, and again, maybe if for you, it might be a better idea to take a chunk off and do work on one project first and then work at another project and kind of chunk it out for you as a person. Kind of depends on what works best for you and your family. Uh, personally, like I'm one of these people where I can't stand like dust and mess. So like if we're doing an upgrade to my house, it's like you have to get this done this day, this day, this day, this day. And, does it always work out like that? No, but I'm one of those people that can't stand things left open where other people are more understanding and can handle it better than me as a person can. So it's also understanding what works best for you and your family um, and kind of being transparent with that with the contractors. I'd much rather a customer tell me like, hey, I this is completely unacceptable up front because then we know the expectation we must meet and there's no wiggle room. Um, whereas trying to like work with them and bend and bow is just going to lead to an unpleasant experience for you. And that's the last thing anyone wants. Okay. All right. Are there any more questions out there? Any, just anyone want to unmute and ask a question? Just want to give another minute for that. Oh yeah. Nikki has a good point. That's right. A new roof would be an important step to do before solar and before attic insulation. Good points. Very smart points. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> okay. Are you raising your hand? Yep, I always raise my hand. Um, yeah, I have a quick question. So I have radiators at home. What are my options? Good. You want to? Who's got an answer? Amy's asking about people that have radiators. So in that case, which technology should she go for? You just want to talk and not to... I mean, whatever she wants. I mean, if you have radiators, you can leave your current system in place and use it as a backup. You can go through the pro and install like a ducted system or a ductless system or a geothermal system. You could rip those radiators out if you don't like the aesthetic of them and, and do that aesthetic work as well. Um, there's it's kind of a hard in terms of you, what you have when you say radiators, you kind of lots of options. There are lots of things that would be a follow up question to that. 
Yeah, it just pours right out of my mouth. I'm going to ask you, are you looking to keep your radiators? <laughs> because if you are, then yeah, you can just leave it as a, as a backup uh, system. And then you, know, you can pretty much go with ductless, ducted, geothermal. I hear, I hear mid-century modernism, modernism, modernism is quite in these days. So if you want to keep the look, but new technology, why not? All right. Yeah, I was just posing the question, you know, for those who I'm sure it's a very common question that um, we work with. So I was just posing it for um, those on this call. But yeah, great answer. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Looks like we have a few more questions. I see Leola's raising her hand, someone at the library, and also uh, Mr. Kotisha. I'm sorry, I'm probably saying your last name wrong. Do you want to go first? Uh, thank you very much. It's Kotecha, like in Cha Cha Cha. Uh, so thank you very much. A very, very interesting presentation. Quite, quite amazing how much innovation is taking place. And Google is uh, Google clone or Google Sun is uh, in the market too. Uh, my question is really very basic. Uh, we have hot uh, water heat, and we have uh, the uh, you know, normal compressor type air conditioning to separate units. Does that mean that if you go to uh, to geo to uh, a heat pump that we got to rip out both and replace them both? So can you review again? You've got heat, you've got hot water radiators yeah. for heating. Yeah. And what uh, was the other thing? The other is uh, it's uh, uh, independent. Um, Air conditioning uh, with central a compressor air. and the yeah, it's a central air exactly. And a central air system. So yes. when I talk to people on the phone, we also ask like, what are the ages of those two systems? Are they getting older? My, my, yes, they are old. Uh, okay. um, I would imagine uh, as old as uh, we have been in the house, which is forty years. <laughs> All right, perfect yeah, time. I mean, this is a great piggyback to Amy's question, right? Because it sounds like your hot water is probably radiators. Um, uh, baseboard or something like that. But uh, I mean, yes, the, the short answer is, uh, you know, at least from a geothermal heating and cooling perspective, it is one system that does both. Right. Would, so we have to would remove okay. both. Okay. And the price range? Depends on the size of your house. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah. So uh, that's where the evaluation comes in. Thank you very much. It's a great program. Thank you. Thanks for one question. system to maintain instead of two, which is nice. So rather than have to maintaining your boiler and maintaining your AC and all that stuff, you're kind of just maintaining one heat pump system, whether it be geothermal or air source heat pumps. That's right. right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We have a question from the Warner Library. Hi. In, in person question. Everything's on virtual. Um, so I'm looking to understand the relative efficiency of air source heat pumps versus uh, geothermal. And say my home has you know measured a thirty thousand BTU heating load need, and it's uh, you know a thirty degree day. How much more power is the air source heat pump using to heat my home um, relative to a geothermal system? Great question. So, what is the more efficient technology, Giovanni? Do you want to answer this one? Sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great. question. Uh, it's a question that's very difficult to quantify as far as how much more um, power will take to uh, for the air source uh, in, in, in um, comparison to the geothermal. I can tell you that the geothermal is um, a lot more efficient than the air source. Keep in mind that the geothermal is working with a constant temperature of about 55 degrees, a constant ground temperature. So whether it's whether the temperature outside is 100 degrees or 10 below, that ground temperature is the same, 55 degrees. When you have the air source, the air source heat pump, they're very, very efficient, um, uh, considering that they are air source heat pumps. But when you have um, an outside temperature fluctuating, so the air source heat pump will have to work a little bit harder in order to keep your home um, a little bit more comfortable. Now, it, it depends on, on, on your... On your um, um, home as well. I mean, you, you may, you know, you may really want to have a geothermal system, but your home may not qualify for it. So your only other option in that case would be the air source heat pump. So the short answer is the geothermal is more efficient, 
but the air source heat pump is by far more efficient than a conventional heating or air conditioning system. And you can also help out both of those systems by making sure your load is as low as possible and your house is air sealed um, the way it should be. Again, keeping the conditioned air where it belongs. Great points. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And I, and I just also wanted to say publicly that I would like to have an electric heat system installed in my house for this winter. And so all the contractors can get my first person to give me, a, you know, a good quote and a good schedule against my business. And, you know, so please get the contact information from Sustainable Westchester and give me a call. You got it. We got that going. That's a good offer, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we have a question from Leola. Uh, you... Yes, thank you, Amy, for asking about the radiator issue. <laughs> we old home radiator people have a bit of a dilemma sometimes um, with these replacements. Did I hear you correctly, Giovanni, that you actually do have geothermal systems that, can, that um, are ductless? So a radiator home might not have to have ducts to have geothermal. Did I hear you correctly? You did. Yes. Costs a lot more money than the reducted? <laughs> uh, you know, it's the whole cost uh, situation really depends on a lot of things, right? Because we have to look at the heat loss. We have to look at square footage. We have to look at cubic feet. You know, you may have a, a 2,000 square foot uh, home, right, with uh, regular ceilings. And then you give me the same square footage house with cathedral ceilings both homes will require different size systems. So the home assessment is extremely important because we have to look at a lot of, we have to look at the, the configuration, the layout of the space, um, the cubic feet uh, in the space. But yes, the, the answer is yes. And is that available for the Con Ed rebate? It's a, it's, a, it's a heat pump. It's a geothermal system. Yes. All right. 